The Observing and Describing Emotions Worksheet can be found on page 282 of the DBT Skills Handouts and Worksheets. That is from Marshall Linehan's book, DBT Skills Training Handouts and Worksheets. You're going to need the book if you want to learn the skills, so I suggest if you don't have it, you try to get your hands on a copy. The handout can also be found on page 281. So the handout on 281 is sort of like a flow chart with a little design on it. And the handout on page 282 is sort of a drop down list that's kind of like a checklist of different things that you fill out. So the first thing that you can start with, there's kind of two ways to start. You can start with trying to figure out an emotion that you want to understand a little bit better that you find troubling or you want to um, kind of clarify your experience, an emotion that's maybe too big or too strong or too overwhelming for you. And try to figure out what emotion that actually is. So sometimes when emotions are really intense, people have a hard time putting words on experience. And you may not have an emotion name for it, um, but it could be something like outraged or livid. Um, it could be something like feeling really vulnerable or raw or exposed, uh, maybe panic, fear, um, trepidation. So there's all sorts of emotion words. And if you don't, if you need help putting words on the emotion or identifying what emotions go with what sorts of um, inside experiences, there's a whole nother set of handouts and worksheets on page 214 to 233 that helps people to organize and understand um, emotions and we can spend more time on that later. But I like to start with the observing and describing emotions because everyone has emotions and everyone at some point has an emotion that's troublesome or um, you know that sort of is obviously trying to get their attention. So you try to figure out what emotion it is and then you try to figure out how intense it is. The intensity thing is really important because emotions that are really intense and really strong are generally more um, you know, people pay attention to those more and they can be more problematic for people. And you can have emotions at a different intensity, like you could be irritated or annoyed or you could be um, enraged. So intensity level can also kind of fit with your experience of putting words on the emotion. So the other thing is trying to figure out what started the emotion. Um, how do you know it started? When did it start? When did you start to notice it? And if there was any clear precipitating events or things that set off the emotion, or maybe that's not very clear. And if that's not very clear, one of the things that you can do is identify sort of a list of stressors. And sometimes that helps people figure out the preceding events that led up to the experience of the emotion. So um, you have the emotion name, the intensity, the prompting events or precipitating variables, um, the things that might be making you vulnerable. So sometimes those are things about biology, like lack of sleep, not eating well, um, a series of arguments or fights that led up to kind of a bigger emotion, something like that. And again, the worksheets on 240, 214 to 223 can help you give you some examples. Um, and then also your thought process, your interpretations of the event or situation. So the rest of the worksheet is helping you understand the sort of inside and outside experience that happens when you have an emotion. So um, what's going on in your face and body and what might be changed or not changed. Sometimes when people are really angry, they put a smile on their face and they act really happy and outgoing. <clears throat> So their inside experience doesn't match their outside experience and they might feel inauthentic or incongruent. So that's important to note if you're kind of working towards understanding your emotions better. Um, an action urge. So an action urge could be an uh, urge to withdraw, hide, sleep. It could be an urge to get in an argument, defend yourself. Um, it could be an urge to do something extreme or destructive, an urge to eat, an urge to leave, an urge to go off and drive somewhere. Um, so it could be a lot of different things. Um, 
and then looking at your face and body language, much, much like your face and body changes. So what is actually happening in your face and body? What does it look like and how would somebody know? And then what you actually said, what you actually did, and the after effects of the emotion, so how long the emotion actually lasted. Now, all of these things are situations that give a lot of information about predictability and control of emotions, um, judgment of emotions in terms of reducing shame from for about really intense emotions. So when you do a lot of observing and describing and you feel embarrassed or guilty or terrible about yourself because of um, your reaction or how you, you're feeling, doing this frequently will help you just kind of sit back and sort of check, boom, 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 what are all the factors that come up with emotions? Um, how do you know what emotions might be likely in any given situation? And it also leads into um, what you can do with really intense emotions and problem solving. So I love this worksheet because I think it's, if I start DBT with somebody, it's usually the first one I go to. Um, anyone can do it at any time across multiple life situations. People generally have emotions and that's kind of a given. So a person could fill out this worksheet about a different emotion, a different time, a different place in their life, a different challenge, and could also help it to clarify and understand what they're feeling and then also get a baseline of um, what to do with your emotion in terms of looking at its function and what your emotion tells you. And we're going to do that in the next, the, the worksheet's coming up. So spend a lot of time on this and um, look at pages 214 to 223 if you're really struggling with confusing emotions. And um, just try to get started, fill it out, fill it out multiple times. If this is one worksheet that you go back to over and over, I highly recommend it. But this is the overview of the observing and describing emotions. So good luck with that.